Gerald, good to have you on the show. Um, all right, when you look at the, the, uh, the current standoff at the border between Poland and Belarus, uh, where you have thousands of migrants sort of uh, camped out in freezing conditions, there seems to be a little bit of a different situation when you compare it to previous crises. And that, I mean, it seems that this one seems to be a manufactured emergency. Yes, you're completely right. The only refugees who left Belarus in recent years to the European Union were people who were fleeing from the regime of Alexander Lukashenko. There are no other refugees. Belarus doesn't give protection to anyone. So in order to put, protection, uh, to put pressure on the European Union, Belarus had to lure these people into the country. So what was being done in recent months was that there was a campaign to tell people, listen, pay a few thousand euros, get on a plane from uh, northern Iraq or from Syria or uh, any other airport in the region, fly to Minsk. We offer you a safe and easy way into the European Union. And that was a trap. The moment people arrived in Belarus, uh, money was taken from them. We have many harrowing stories of how they are being pushed at the border by Belarus authorities. And so they end up trapped because, on the other hand, the European Union and Poland in particular have also responded uh, with force, suspending the right to apply for asylum, pushing people back, which is illegal under international law. And so people ended up as um, uh, victims in this cynical game uh, of pressure, a brutal, deadly game, because people have died in that cold already. Um, all right. So how do you get out of this trap? Because um, it's a lot of parties that are involved. I mean, when you look at the Turkey-EU deal, which you were um, involved with, the transaction at a national le level was pretty simple. Turkey was getting uh, monetary compensation for hosting the refugees, and the European Union would avoid uh, an influx. When you look at the dynamics of this situation, it is a little bit more difficult. Does it make it more difficult to solve? Well, uh, as, as is the case in other border crises, there is always a, an easy solution, which is uh, a dangerous one, which is what we see today, which is just force. Uh, the 27 EU member states have stood behind the Polish strategy, which, as I said, involved taking people who've reached Poland and bringing them back to the other side of the fence um, into a situation where we know from all the reporting uh, they are not safe. Uh, they are inhumane conditions created by Belarus. So if you look for another way out, if you say that this is not acceptable, that the European Union would need to accept people, then you run into the problem, how do you then stop people going to Belarus? Because clearly Lukashenko is earning money from this. So the European Union has tried to do three things in addition to its pushback policy. Uh, it's to stop airplanes taking people there. It's to uh, threaten Belarus with more sanctions. And, and this is, I think, dangerous, it's to negotiate with him. Mm -hmm. So what we have proposed, my colleagues and I, is to do something different, to try to find a third country, because you shouldn't negotiate with Belarus in this situation. He created cynically this crisis. Find a third country. Take The European Union should take the people that are now there. Uh, when they reach the EU, they should take them in. But it should also work that from a cut-off date in the near future, those who will then arrive from Belarus will not stay in the European Union, but will be taken to a third country for processing of asylum claims. Because nobody wants to pay thousands of euros to okay. Lukashenko, okay. to Belarus, to then end up in a third country. But for this, you need an offer, and you need diplomacy, and the European Union has not been successful at this so far. Gerald, it seems like this is a unique like solution for a unique problem. But... Um... The fact of the matter is that we've seen multiple crises like this over uh, the years. I mean, my question to you is why hasn't the European Union been able to sort of come up with or implement a consistent, unanimous refugee policy? Well, um, it might sound a bit radical, but I fear we have at the moment a consistent European refugee policy. It's just not a humane one. Uh, we have seen pushbacks. Turkish Coast Guards report on pushbacks in the Aegean. We have pushbacks on the border between Croatia and Bosnia. We have pushbacks officially recorded from Hungary to Serbia. And now we have these uh, open policy of pushbacks at the border between uh, Poland and Belarus. So my fear is, in fact, uh, and this is a big threat to the global refugee system, that by failing to find other solutions, 
uh, like the EU-Turkey agreement, remember that agreement, which was proposed by Turkey in March 2016 to the European Union, was meant to not create such a situation. The idea was that the right to apply for asylum in the European Union would be maintained. Point one of the agreement says that there must be no pushbacks by the European Union. But Turkey agreed from a cutoff date to take back those who arrived after this date in return for the European Union, offering a number of very concrete things, including a larger resettlement of a larger number of people from Turkey. Now, uh, that was Turkey rescuing the European Union in March 2016 but through creative diplomacy. It worked for both sides. The European Union didn't implement it very well in Greece, but it reduced the number of deaths, it reduced the number of arrivals without violating refugee law. And uh, it's that kind of partnership with other countries where the European Union needs to bring in refugees legally in larger numbers, but reduce irregular migration that offers a way out. But this uh, obviously requires more effort. It's more complicated, even to explain than a simple policy, which is to say these people who come are a weapon in the hands of a dictator, so we just use force to push them back, uh, which is easy to explain. It is being implemented, but it is a fatal blow at the heart of the Refugee Convention, whose core principle is non refoulement no pushbacks. Yeah. I mean, that's where your proposal of a third country could play in um, very well. All right, uh, Gerald Knaus, um, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.